So if you notice that you're giving your passengers whiplash or that your stuff is strewn all about the cabin when you're driving around, chances are it's because you're not driving smoothly and yes, it is your fault. Welcome back, I'm Tedward and welcome back to my 2022 Honda Civic Si. Today, I wanna to talk about being a better driver with a manual transmission. There's a lot of folks that I've been in cars with lately that say they drive a stick shift and then we go for a ride and I'm wondering, who taught you how to drive this stick shift? Now, I'm not blaming the drivers. I am blaming the teachers. I think there are generations of bad teachers of manual transmissions, and sure, they teach the basics. And this video is intended for people who already kind of know how to drive a stick shift. Like, you can get the car moving and get to your destination. Great. But can you do it smoothly, and can you do it without ruining the drivetrain? So let's start at the beginning, starting the car. Now, it's best to start a car without the clutch depressed to the floor, but because of safety reasons, they have clutch interlocks installed in pretty much everything since the early 2000s, maybe even in the 90s, okay? So that's not usually an option. Now, the reason for this is it's better for your throwout bearing to have that clutch engaged to the flywheel when you start the car, but alas, we're not in a world where that is allowed. But I wanna clutch in, check that I'm in neutral, foot on the brake and start the car. Now, before I go taking my foot off the clutch, I'm gonna check, I always do this. I check again that I'm in neutral. I have my foot firmly on the brake and then I release the clutch. The reason for this is because even if I have a parking brake, which may fail, I can still start the car in first gear, right? So if I turn the car off again, I can put this car in first gear and it'll start right up because I've got the clutch interlock done. Now, if my foot is off the brake, I don't have the parking brake on, and I let off the clutch, the car is gonna jump forward. Now, that might be a car in front of you, it might be a wall, it's gonna do damage. So maybe your concern of like, oh my God, you're gonna damage the throw out bearing. Well, that might all go away because you've trashed two cars <laughs> when you've jumped it into the other car. I always treat a stick shift like it's a loaded weapon, okay? So that's why I do keep that foot on the brake as just a safety check because I would rather have the car just stall on the brake than do some damage. And if you're in an unfamiliar vehicle, this is big because sometimes it's hard to tell when a car is in first or second or reverse. These, this stick, it's not telling you anything. You, that's why I just give this little neutral jiggle and people go nuts for this. They get so mad at me when I neutral jiggle, but a neutral jiggle is a very good way to prevent a really stupid accident. So now let's talk about actually driving and we wanna smooth out our shifts. So first, we're gonna pull away. Let's pretend the car is completely cold. Manual transmissions don't behave as nice as they do when they're cold as when they're hot. So when you're driving away on a really cold, especially if it's like a cold winter day, sometimes that car doesn't really want to engage in gear. And this is when we need to remember that we are not just sliding a stick back and forth in a random hole. We are actually engaging and disengaging mechanical linkages and gears. They need to mesh properly. And with modern cars, you have a synchro mesh, which takes care of most of the, 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 the heavy lifting. But still, this doesn't mean we just slam gears. I watch new drivers or even experienced drivers, the way they shift drives me insane. I feel like they have no mechanical sympathy and we need to have some thought into every time we deliberately engage or disengage this gear lever. Never trust a blinker. So we're coming out in our Honda Civic Si. I'm not slamming second gear. I'm allowing the car to tell me what it likes, how it likes to be driven. And I'm also being patient when I come off that clutch because this car does have a lot of rev hang. A lot of modern cars have rev hang. The whole idea is that you don't want to rush anything. You want everything to be matched at the correct speed. So that means that you're engaging your transmission at the right pace. And that way when you go for an upshift, it's clutch, and out. This is important because if you try to rush the shift, if I go into fourth, I got a little jolt there, okay? It's not much because this car basically has no torque, but when you're driving like, let's say you're driving a Corvette, that is actually going to have some impact. So smooth and off the clutch. So smoothing out your shifts is really just a game of listening to the car, letting it tell you where it wants to be shifted, how it wants to be shifted. 
in this particular Honda, for example, my Civic Si, that first second shift, it doesn't really like doing it under like 2,500 RPM. It'll do it, it doesn't crunch, but it's not like butter. It doesn't just slide right in. And that's what you wanna find. You wanna find for the longevity of your transmission and for the smoothness of your driving, the sweet spot for your transmissions. Some cars, like I used to have this Toyota Celica GTS. It had the Yamaha built engine. The one that's in the Lotus Elise it revs out to like 8,400 RPM. Great car, nice, close, short ratio, six speed. The problem though, was that, that that transmission really only wanted to be shifted hard at redline, like really high in the revs. And, and that's just fine. It is just fine to do that. But you have to remember that that sort of speed and ferocity is not necessarily going to be greeted with a happy shift at lower or mid-range RPMs. Sometimes cars and their transmissions really are happy in certain places and they want to be shifted fast or slow depending on what the scenario. If you're driving them hard, a fast shift is warranted. If you're just cruising and poodling around town, there's no reason to be slamming gears like you're in the Fast and the Furious. So if you notice that you're giving your passengers whiplash or that your stuff is strewn all about the cabin when you're driving around, chances are it's because you're not driving smoothly and yes, it is your fault. Another bad habit that I see people doing, they're really excited to be driving a stick ship. So they sit at a light and they've got their foot in on the clutch. Now, this is fine for like a second, okay? You're like, ooh, we're about ready to go. Great, but don't just sit there with the clutch engaged in first gear. It's very bad for the throwout bearing. You will prematurely wear pieces of your car. Not a good vibe. And also, should go without saying, don't rock back and forth at a light on a hill. That is so unnecessary. We're going to let the school bus go first. Completely unnecessary to be rocking back and forth. That is just introducing absolutely unnecessary heat and wear on your clutch. There's no need to be moving. Just come to a stop and relax. All right. The next thing. Enthusiastic driving. I get it. You bought a stick shift because you're an enthusiast. You want to engage with your vehicle. You want to feel all the things. This is great. But you're shifting too much. I have watched so many people go through like three, four, five, back to four, back to three. And I'm like, there's no racetrack on earth that you need to be in this scenario. I can't think of it. We're over shifting. Sometimes it's okay to just run out of gear and enjoy it. Now, right now, I should be in fourth because we're really aiming for fuel economy. I don't want to be lugging the engine up this hill. I can get away with it. But I don't need to go to fifth, back to fourth, back to third, back to fourth. We're okay. We can survive here. So here, if I, I mean, this is a residential neighborhood. We're not going to rip down here. But if I'm ripping around some empty back road, like for the most part, you're going to be within a certain range of speed. There might be two gears that you're going between if you have a really small power band in the car and there's tight corners. But a lot of times you can just get away with leaving it in third and enjoying the gear or fourth or whatever you're doing. You know, we don't need to be over shifting. And, and I'm not saying this is necessarily bad for the car. You are probably introducing excess wear and maybe you're having fun, but you kind of look silly. It looks unprofessional. Like it just, it makes you look like a noob. So if you want to look like a seasoned pro, sometimes just, just enjoy the gear. So you notice I'm not just dumping the clutch on those shifts. There's a little bit of rev hang. Now it depends on the car. This is all car dependent. I'm coming out kind of smooth because I don't want to just destroy the front wheels. You know, we're, we're not trying to race. Um, you, you want to be smooth. Now I'm not slipping the clutch. I'm just giving it the clutch that it's desiring, that it's asking for and no more. And remember, when you drive ultra hard, you can actually put yourself in a little bit of danger because a lot of those Mustang crashes that we see coming out of cars and coffee, most of it's induced by just slamming second, dumping the clutch while wide open throttle. And it's like, you're shocking the driveline. You're essentially clutch kicking the car and you're inducing that wheel spin. And then you, if you're not an experienced driver, you're not correcting for it correctly or you're not peeling off of that throttle to adjust for that excess slip angle. Okay, and finally, this should go without saying, please, please rev match your downshifts. 
when you go into the lo next lower gear, don't just shove it in gear and let the clutch out. You, you know, you end up bucking like a Bronco. It's not good for anything. Your passengers think you're a bad driver. You, you look like a bad driver. Your driveline is not thanking you because literally everything from your clutch to your transmission to your axle splines, everything that you're touching is getting excess impact and wear. It's completely unnecessary. You want everything to be smooth. So we wanna rev match our downshift so that way we hit the target RPM that we're gonna be at in the next lower gear. So we go, and then, you know, we, we, we relax, we let the clutch out at the right time, but it's all about timing. It's just like playing an instrument. So please, don't treat your car like it owes you anything. When you use a paddle shifter, all you're doing is telling a computer, I would like you to do the thing. Well, the computer knows how to time everything correctly. Do you. So if you're driving a manual gearbox, you need to make sure that you're timing correctly, that you are thinking, and, and, and all you have to do is adjust if you're wrong. It's okay to be wrong, it's okay to buck around a little bit, it's okay to laugh about it, but it's important to understand cause and effect. Why is this happening? If on the downshift your car starts to pull forward, it means you gave the car too many revs. If the car is slowing down, it means you didn't give it enough revs. Find that happy medium. And whenever I get into a new car, typically I give it a couple revs, not high revs. I mean, we're probably dealing with a cold engine, but I feel out what that throttle map feels like. Like how much does it take to get 2000 RPMs out of this thing? That's important to know because you're going to have to execute that every time you downshift the vehicle. So when we put it all together, and we smooth out our driving, and we listen to our car like it has wants, needs, and desires, and we respect those things, the highest form of praise is when you have a passenger who is maybe not a car enthusiast, and after 20 minutes of driving looks over at you and says, wait, what are you doing down there? And you're like, what do you mean? They're like, well, what are you, what are you doing with the, with the stick? I don't do that in my car. You say, well, it's a manual transmission. You didn't realize this? And they say, no, because they didn't even feel you shifting. That is what you want. Nice smooth shifts to the point where your passenger doesn't even recognize you're doing it. So, take your time, be patient, don't be so hard on yourself, accept your faults. There are cars that I have harder time driving. Some cars have really tricky throttle mapping, some cars have really poorly tuned situations where it's like throttle, clutch, and gearbox are just a nightmare because of like a clunky gearbox that wants to be shifted too fast, rev hang that drives you out of your mind, and a clutch delay valve that just doesn't let you have any control over what's happening. But if you do your job right, you can interpret what needs to go on. There are definitely easier cars to drive than others, but you'll always be able to figure it out if you just adjust your timing. But I think the worst thing you can do is just say, well, I know how to drive a stick shift. Don't tell me what to do. We can all improve, we can all get better. I'm not even teaching like advanced techniques here. We're not double clutching, we're not even heel toe downshifting here. We're just talking about how to drive smoothly because I think there's this huge gap where there's a ton of people who don't know how to drive a stick at all. There's a ton of people who are incredibly good at driving a stick shift. And then there's these people who, who know how to get from A to B in a manual transmission, but just drive like monsters. And you guys are wearing out our clutches on the used market. No, I'm kidding. So just be good, try to be smooth, and listen to the car. The car will tell you if it's not happy, and be in tune with it. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. If you've been driving a manual transmission for a long time, you know exactly the difference between a shift that feels like you forced it in and a shift that feels like the gearbox asked for you to put it in. It's like butter. The one that feels like butter is possible all the time, most of the time, most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time. That's what you should be striving for. Like, those delicious shifts where it's like the gearbox is accepting it from you. It's like, oh yeah, it's pulling it in, let's go. That's the kind of buttery smooth shift you want. If you find yourself always having these shifts where it feels like you're kind of forcing your way in, not, necessar not necessarily a crunch. I mean, crunches do happen, I'm not, I'm not judging, I'm not judging. This is, a, this is an open, safe space to talk about these things. But what I'm saying is, you can get those buttery shifts if you just listen to the car a little more.